So today on Simply Happy Conversations, I'm talking with Simone. She's from A Fresh Approach Coaching and Consulting, and she is a neuro coach who brings neuroscience and strategy together. Welcome, Simone. Thanks, Nora. It's a real pleasure to be here today. Oh, thank you for making the time to come and chat to me about the work that you do. So maybe start with things that you like to do in your free time. Yeah. Well, not free time. When you're not working. When you're not working. <laughs> when I'm not working, um, I love to read. I'm a learner for life. So if I have a book, I love to read. The other thing I love to do, and you may be able to see it in the background for those who are watching on video, is plants. So I love my green plants, the indoor plants. I did get up to about 65 inside before my partner said no more. And so then I started to put them outside as well. So it's um, either gardening um, or with my indoor plants, watering them or tending to them or reading. Oh, nice. So have you got a favourite indoor plant? I love indoor plants too. I've become a bit obsessed with them. But yes, do you have a favourite? I love the prayer plant. I've got a beautiful prayer plant just here and it's it's just growing. It's like, it's it's pretty big at the moment. It's like this big and I'm like, I love that. <laughs> I love when you find a spot where it's really happy and it just goes crazy in that one spot. It's when I can't find the quite the right spot and I keep moving this plant around trying to find the best spot that, um, yeah, because we have sort of light on one side but not light on the other side yeah. of the house, yeah. So Tim, tell us about your business. How did you start and what what how long it's been going for? Yeah, thanks, Narelle. So uh, my business is a fresh approach. And the reason why I've called it a fresh approach is it's a fresh approach to you, to your life, to your mindset. And I started it um, because I'm in what I would call retirement. Now, what retirement to me is, is absolutely living and loving my passion, which is coaching. Now, in terms of how it started, I've had eight careers and it's spanned from neuroscience through to data analytics, through to strategy, workshop facilitation. And I always said that when I retired, I would end up coaching. And the reason why I love coaching is a simple question, a simple tool, a well-placed or a coaching session can absolutely change a person's life. And I've always been really interested in the mind, um, the neuroscience and psychology background. But when I first had my first coaching session about probably 10 years ago now, I went, what just has happened to me? With the profound insights that I got from that one session, changed my world, changed my perspective on life. And I went, I've had 15 years of training in psychology and neuroscience. I've never had this happened to me before. And so I basically started to drink the uh, Kool-Aid of coaching <laughs> um, and started up as a bit of a side hustle alongside my mainstream work. COVID happened, got burnt out a few uh, a, a bit and went, I think I'm done with being having a life of corporate servitude. I want to go into my main love and passion and that is coaching. And as I started the business, I went, well, what's special about me, what's different about me that people would find interesting and would potentially, uh, you know, have I'd have value or a different perspective. And it was really bringing that neuroscience in as well as the strategy and pretty much doing these brain hacks on people so that they change, literally transform and change their life around. Oh, that's beautiful. So th there you just like, entered into the next question so what are brain hacks maybe actually maybe start with neuroscience what's neuroscience for those who may be going what's neuroscience <laughs> neuroscience is essentially science of the brain and science of your mind so what I do is I merge that science into really tangible ways to understand how your brain and how your mind work alongside the coaching now what brain hacks are before I talk about brain hacks I'll t I will go techie just for a moment to mm -hmm. talk a little bit just a smidge about the neuroscience components so the largest growth and change that happens in our brain is in our formative years as we're growing up as a child we are making um, huge amounts of neuronal connections or pathways in our brain and that and it's either 
forging new pathways or linking and pruning and pruning back other pathways that are not used. Now, this is basically building the architecture of our brain as a child. Fast forward 10, 20, 30, 40 years, and most of us are running around as adults with that same architecture that we built up as a child. So I'm, I'm not sure about you, but for me, I look at it and I go, me being in my early 40s, I don't necessarily want a seven-year-old architecture that was built up at, in, my, in my mind necessarily driving me. Yep, definitely. And, and just but, thinking of that time as well, like, yeah. you know, 40 years ago, life is a lot different now too as well, isn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. But we don't, we don't ever upgrade our architecture. Um, we may amend it and move things around depending on all of our life experiences, but we don't actually physically look at it and upgrade it. So therefore, brain hacks, um, no matter what point in your life, is a really simple is a really simple um, tool, activity, uh, game, or question that's well placed that helps to upgrade that architecture that you had as a seven-year-old that you formatively built then to give you more of an adult architecture, adult driver, um, so that you're, you've got actually an adult <laughs> driving you rather than a se potential seven-year-old driving you. And so it's a, a brain hack is a really simple tool, activity, game that gets in into your subconscious, which is the, basically the seat of what drives you and enables you to make those changes rather than anything that's really at that surface conscious level. Yeah, nice. So have you got some examples of actual brain hacks that you've used with people or oh. you've seen an impact with the ones that work the best? Oh, there's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> there's a lot. Um, one of those, and, I, and I'm actually going to go into one right now, is about um, we are born all humans are born with a single fear, one fear. Every other fear is learnt. So already, as you can tell, I'm bringing some of the neuroscience already, but helping to make, helping you to think, oh, hang on a sec, if all my fears are learnt, which ones are they? Are they all learnt? So mm. even now you're undergoing, you and the listeners are undergoing a brain hack right now, just with this little piece of education. So if every single fear is learnt and it's pretty much learnt from a byproduct of the environment we've grown up, the interactions we've had, therefore we can unlearn all of that. Now, the one fear that every single human has that they're born with is actually a fear of, of falling. Oh, wow, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so if you think about it, if you're in a sleep at night and you're dreaming, yeah. And you fear and you fall, you wake up. Yep, you do. But that that's your one fear. So every other fear is absolutely conditioned in you. So if every fear is conditioned within you that you have learned, you can unlearn that. And so it really, really so just by having a that piece of information, which is basically a piece of an education from a brain hack perspective, what you can do is you can list out all of your fears and you just write them all out and then you look at them and you go is this true and that's another beautiful hack a really simple question of, is this true so it could be I and I'm not I'm afraid of heights and you go hmm is this true why am I afraid of heights where did that come from? And mm. usually you look to your people around you that you were with as growing up. Oh, hello. Hello, grandmother. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like I've taken that fear on. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so that's a really simple um, example of a brain hack to start to um, build a dissonance in your mind to go, should I be really afraid of that or not? Yes or no. And as you start to build up each different type of um, brain hack, education within that, you start to dissolve all of this. Mm, that's great. Yes, I'm I'm thinking of mine, which is working as a professional organiser and being in sheds sometimes. You see a lot of spiders and mice. 
and or mice even in homes as well, depending on what's going on with the weather. Mm-hmm. And and there's there seems to be a little bit of a mice epidemic here in Geelong as well at the moment. So I have been working really hard on the mice one this year that now I can actually pick up a dead one and put them in the bin as well. So yes, before this year though, I would say to myself, I am just scared of mice. I don't like mice. Whereas now I'm like, oh yeah, I can deal with mice. And they jump out of boxes all the time and they jump out of wardrobes and things. So yes, I've got used to them. Spiders, spiders will be my next one. <laughs> yeah. And and look, and that's a that is a perfect example because as a child, and I've got really young children, I've watched them. And as a child, um, you know, when you're one year, two years old, you'll see a spider and you'll actually pick it up and play with it because it's of interest to you. And it's the people around you that freak out going, don't touch that. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah, and you look at that, and and it, and I've seen it happen with my daughter when she was two years old, picking them up and that, and I never panicked, but grandmother would have come along and go, oh, "Don't do that! Oh, I'm scared of spiders!" Ooh, 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 ooh. Yeah, and now she is petrified of them, and I look at that and I go, "That is a learned behaviour." Oh, that's interesting because I'm thinking back to my kids. My daughter was petrified of dogs when she was little, like so scared she would jump literally into our arms all the time and we actually did um some oh what's it called acupuncture with her and um and that actually solved it and because then you know a few weeks later she's like can we actually get a dog and then we got a dog after that but yes she was petrified and it was just really scary because she would just come running and it's like we were just really worried because she'd be near the roads and she'd just run towards someone to basically jump on top of you so that she could get away from the dog. So it was like, we have to do something about this. I have no idea how it started. So, yeah. It could be through sounds. Now, the Mm. other thing um, we have when we're born with is um, we have um, this sound thing. So we're not, we're not startle reflex. We're not scared of sounds. But as babies, we will startle with loud sounds. So it could be through dog barking or something like that that then turns into a fear. So some people say, oh, um, loud sounds as a baby is a fear. So no, it's a startle, which then will turn into a fear if in the right circumstances. Mm, That makes sense too because also one of the things that I've heard and learnt is that um, the startle reflex can actually stick around in particular in neurodivergent people and they have a higher startle reflex um, around things which I definitely experience all the time as well for myself. Absolutely so yeah you would not lose that through your life No, and and that's and that's that's just you know your makeup and your reality so yeah, yeah, yeah. So then talk about mindset and to- like tips around mindset and how you work with mindset with um, clients. Absolutely. So there's so much you can do around mindset and mindset is really your be- the beliefs that sit behind you and how you therefore approach your world. So you can either have a positive mindset or a negative mindset and it's really about trying to work through your mindset challenges and get to know yourself and yourself more deeply and your subconscious self. And so I work a lot with the subconscious self to get people in absolute alignment with themselves. And when they're in alignment with themselves and they know themselves, they actually create the world envir- around them. So examples examples being um, I've worked with a tradie who was a chippy and he was completely down on his whole luck um he um he was pretty much hated his 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 work as a chippy and in a couple of months through working on mindset him understanding himself him understanding himself much more deeply the various voices that occur in our heads and they are there are a multitude of voices and they all get built up from that seven-year-old architecture in our mind which are there to is there to protect us and they stay with us through life those Mm. um those voices are often judge us and put us down in our minds and through him understanding all of those voices the roles that they play where they come from why they're there uh he essentially dissolved a lot of his fears 
dissolved a lot of his traumas, upgraded the architecture of his mind that had developed from him as in those formative years, and within six months had started his own business for employees, was bringing in um, or was on track to bring in 250K for his business in his first year of operation, all through the power of mindset. So I look at that example and I go, it's all about being able to create the world around you. And, and once you can upgrade your mind, understand yourself and the power of your mind, you can create any, literally anything that, that you choose. Yeah, that's beautiful. I love that story. Do you have any others around oh, that? Yeah, absolutely. I love another one. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and I don't just work with, prof- I work with professionals and I work with business owners. There's a, um, um, a business owner who, who product-based business owner and was really quite, I would say depressed, had suffered mm. depression his whole life. And when he came to me, it was all around mindset. And so we worked on upgrading the architecture in his mind. And he said to me, right in the middle of COVID, I'm going to move my family to France for six months. And that was a real challenge to me myself going, that's impossible. <laughs> but I went, no, no, I'm the coach. And I realized that I was limiting him by my, myself saying that's impossible. So you can already see that my mindset needed to change to match his mindset and go, all right, let's make that that goal. And so as a coach, you need to constantly push the boundaries of what's possible as well. He literally was on the first flight out as soon as borders opened, which just blew me blew me away. He had all the visas and everything. He moved his family over to France for four or five months. When he came back, because he's basically his whole business had virtually shut down, stopped, slowed to a complete trickle throughout COVID. When he came back, he has 1,000x his revenue and he's now looking at doubling his revenue. And when I say 1,000x, like this is just phenomenal. Yeah, that's huge. Yeah. Um, all due to the power of mindset. Yeah. And and now he's sitting there going, well, I can look, I can look at getting um, new product lines now, and where can I expand, and all of that. So, mindset is just so powerful. I'll, I will also give another example. Um, beautiful lady, professional, um, incredible, um, incredible professional, uh, as is is acclaimed workaholic. And through being a claimed workaholic has been basically escaping the occurrences of her childhood and what occurred in her childhood. And so through beautiful, really simple techniques of just dissolving some of the um, scars of the past, I call it, she has now is now living a life with very clear boundaries around her work Uh found peace within herself and living a life that's really aligned to a lot of her passions. And I look at that and I just go, that's life-changing in itself. A person who is a workaholic trying to escape their their scars of the past and what's occurred from their past childhood to then completely create a brand new understanding of those occurrences, why they occurred, and have an adult perspective on those occurrences to then go really be quite regimented around what they will accept from a work front, what they'll accept from people pleasing and boundaries and all of that. And then basically create a, what, what I would call a life of delight now. Amazing. I love that <laughs> life of delight. So what would you say is the best thing that you love about your business and what yeah. you do? So the best thing is the little things that occur on a daily or weekly or monthly basis. I can't and I and I can't say because sometimes it comes as a rush, sometimes it comes uh, as a as a trickle of really the the wins that my clients have. Yeah. So it could be come in as a text message to say you won't believe this, Simone, <laughs> but this job I've just gotten is an eighty percent 
increase on my current wage and it's everything I've thought of. Or it is a couple months down the track after I've said goodbye to a client and I get a voice message and it is like, you won't believe this, but I now have all of the tools. I'm in the best mindset ever. I've had some crap happen to me of late, but I'm in the best mindset ever to understand that, tackle that and move forward with that and come out even stronger again. Yeah. And so those those little um, little voices of thanks and um, or, you know, catching up with clients from two years ago to say, you've changed my life. This is where I'm at now. That's that's the most rewarding part about what I do. Yeah, I can completely agree. That's exactly the same why I do what I do. And I think that relates to a lot of people who work in the industry of helping others, isn't it? That's why we do it, because we just love hearing how much we've made a change to people. Oh, that's beautiful. So how can people find you and find out more about life hacks as well? Uh, brain hacks, sorry. Yeah, easy. easy. So follow me on any of my social media handles. Um, you'll find me if you look under LinkedIn, Facebook or Insta, Dr. Simone Ball or Simone Ball. You can Google me, A Fresh Approach um, and, and Simone. You can look, look up for Life Coach Simone in Geelong and you'll see me there too as well. So, and just look, go to my website, www.afreshapproach.com.au and by following any one of those, signing up to my newsletter, you will get weekly or more than regular weekly tips and tools and tricks all around mindset and how to upgrade and up-level your life. Oh, thank you so much for your time and for sharing all these tips as well. It's been great. And to hear the stories. I love the stories of other people. Thank you so much, Simone. Thanks, Narelle. It's been an absolute pleasure to be here today.